What's up guys, welcome to another episode and today we're going to be talking about the Diverge photo competition from Sitka. Over the last couple of years, I have been blessed and it has been a part of my job to do photography in the outdoor industry. Well, I started entering the Diverge competition four years ago now, and that was, back then it was Diverge 6. So when I found out that Sitco was doing a photo competition, I immediately wanted to join in and get in on the action. Well, as it turns out, I've been selected as a weekly winner for the last four years in a row. These four images right here are the images that were selected. So today, I just wanna run through them with you and talk about why these pictures were selected and why they're some of my favorites and maybe help you guys in your quest to get a picture selected for the Diverge competition. Let's get into it. This is a picture of my buddy Ben and the buck that he killed in late muzzleloader season a couple years ago. There's a couple interesting things about this picture that I'd like to talk about. First of all, there's a crazy story behind this picture. Ben and I just absolutely went through hell trying to kill this deer. It's a great story and uh, if you ever want to hear it, just hit me up. But there's a couple things I want to talk about with this picture. The first thing is part of the rules of the Diverge competition are that you're, you're not allowed to have any other camouflage in the picture, which makes sense. Sitka, Sitka wants to advertise their stuff. They don't want to advertise other gear with their brand. One of the rules is you have to be wearing Sitka. Neither Ben or I owned any Sitka. We had to figure out a way to take a picture where the camouflage didn't matter. One of the ways to do that is with a long exposure where the hunter is going to be blurry and the camouflage is going to be blurry and you're not going to be able to tell what camouflage is. Well, that's exactly what we did. We took a long exposure picture. Basically, the way we took it was I had Ben with a phone and his headlamp walk back and forth behind the deer and basically lighting the back of the deer, also giving us these neat light streaks in the frame and, and blurring the camouflage, blurring him as well. You'll notice also too, we were able to get some stars in the background and, and some of the lights from the farm there in the background. It's really a simple, a simple trick, but it's a really cool and effective trick if you do it well. Now, one of the things that you need for this picture is you need a tripod. You need to be able to keep the camera still while your subject is moving and while, uh, while the long exposure is happening because if you move the camera, everything's gonna be blurred. I actually didn't have a tripod with me to take this picture, but I knew I wanted to take this picture, so I had to improvise. So what I did was I stuck the camera on a fence post and Ben and I drug this deer up in front of the fence post and set it up exactly how it needed to be press the shutter and just let it sit on top of the fence post and voila. This picture was shot on a super cheap Canon DSLR, the SL1. You've probably never heard of it because it's it's not a fancy camera at all. And some of you might even own one. It's it's You know that it's not a fancy camera. It's a crop sensor It's and, it, and I shot it on the kit lens. This shot is actually a great example of a picture that is taken with minimal supplies, no tripod, no fancy camera, no fancy glass, but you're still able to get a great frame out of it. This is just good photography with limited equipment. What matters more than great equipment is how you use it. And this picture is evidence of that. So let's go to the next one here. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find the highest quality version of this picture, so just bear with me. But we were out doing a photo shoot for Bog. This was a this was a staged pose. This was a pose that, that we set up together, but I went and, and got a little bit creative with it and stepped away from him. And, and I actually walked, marched this hole here in the grass and I framed it like this and shot this picture. And basically the idea behind this picture is it just kind of gives you a little bit of like you're peering through the grass and experiencing a moment of a father and his sons. I really like this picture because even though it is a posed picture, it's actually really real. And anybody that is a father or has hunted with kids knows and has experienced a moment like this. This picture was shot on the Canon 1DX Mark II with the 24 to 70 2.8 Canon lens. That lens is unbelievable. It's super versatile. That 24 millimeters is wide enough to get most of your wide angle shots. And when you're zoomed all the way into 70 millimeters, like I was in this shot, uh, you're able to get 
good depth of field and you're able to really focus on your subject and it's a super sharp lens so that's a great lens definitely recommend that if you if you haven't used that before let's go right to the next one here so the next picture is actually last year's picture this is a picture that I'm really really proud of um, again this is a father-son moment here uh, Joe bringing his kids out but this moment is actually not posed this this moment is 100% real. We were out hunting. Joe was bringing his kids with him. We were after a really nice buck. This is actually, we made a film about this this hunt. Uh, it's called The Burning. Go check it out. Uh, it's on the Hui Man YouTube channel. What I wanted to do was I wanted to get a little bit different perspective than your normal shots. And this is a key for all you photographers out there. If you're kind of struggling to get a quality picture, picture that has a unique angle or something that you've never seen before, try different perspectives. You know, everybody sees the eye level, everybody sees even the waist level, but directly overhead, directly underneath, shooting through, you know, an object. When you experiment with those, the most interesting pictures come from weird perspectives, crazy perspectives, perspectives that you have to actually sort of work to get the right picture. For this picture, it just meant in a blind where we're all sitting in chairs, I had to stand up and I had to reach over top of them and I had to snap a picture. This picture actually got selected as a finalist in Diverge 8 last year. And uh, I'm really proud of that. Uh, that was, that was a, uh, this was, this has always been one of my favorite pictures. And uh, when I saw that, that Sitka thought it was a pretty great picture too, and, and the photographers over there that were judging, I was really, really excited about that. So this picture was actually shot on a Canon 1DX Mark II with a 16 to 35 millimeter lens backed all the way out to 16. That's the only reason that I'm able to capture so much in this image is because I have such a wide angle lens. When you're in tight spaces, you need that wide angle lens, and that's why we brought it on this hunt and uh, it turned out great. Let's move on to this year. One of my favorite pictures and one of the pictures that when I took it, I knew that it was a great picture. You know, some sometimes you know when a picture's good and sometimes you sort of get back to the editing room and, and you look at the pictures and you're like, oh, this one's really cool. Well, this was one of the pictures that when I took it, I knew it was cool. The first thing that makes this picture good is the color. We have the reds, we have the grays, we have the yellows, and we have the greens, and they're all just really pretty colors. Uh, the next thing that made this picture great is actually the lighting. Uh, you'll notice that there's clouds in the sky here, and, and we had a cloudy day. But that soft lighting makes for soft shadows, and it makes for soft highlights, and it just creates a really pretty picture. So cloudy days oftentimes really help this is a picture that as we, Joe and I were walking back from a hunt, uh, I just hung out behind him and I was looking at the lighting and, and I knew that I wanted to take a couple pictures as he was walking out. And uh, so I was just snapping as he was walking. And uh, when I saw him step in front of this red barn here, I knew that, that this was a special frame. And uh, the, the barn sort of draws your attention to him and it also silhouettes him in, in a cool way. I think if the barn wasn't there, uh, this picture would not be nearly as cool. I really like this picture. I just ordered a print of this picture, and uh, this is this is a picture that I'm really excited about. This is shot with the Canon 1DX Mark II on a 1.8 50 millimeter lens, which is why there's such a good depth of field and it's and it's so shallow. But and I definitely recommend that that Canon 50 millimeter. That's a, that's a great lens. So these are the four pictures that have been selected by Sitka for the Diverge competition, and I'm really proud of them. Uh, there's definitely other pictures out there that I also love um, that haven't been selected for the Diverge competition, so go check out my Instagram, link's right here. And let me know in the comments which picture you think is your favorite and which one you would have chosen for a Diverge competition winner. Make sure you tag me in all your Instagram posts, John T. Lockwood. I'd love to see your pictures. I'd love to see what you're submitting to the Diverge competition. So if you've watched this far, you know that we're going to transition into a little bit of different time. We're going to do some Bible time real quick. So this morning, I was reading Romans 14. Paul talks about some really interesting things in this passage. One of them is talking about Christians with weaker faith and Christians with stronger faith. Now, one of the things that they were dealing with in the church that time was eating unclean foods according to Judaism. And, you know, there were the, there were the preachers that were going around telling people that you had to follow the food laws uh, of the Old Testament. But Paul says, now under Christ, everything is indeed clean in verse 20. But Paul admonishes the Romans to not judge each other for their choices. 
he says if one man chooses to abstain from food in order to honor God, then that is worshiping God. And if one man chooses to eat food to worship God, that's that's him worshiping God. And that each individual can do these things in their own way and at their own pace. And if one man does one thing one way and another man does another thing another way, it doesn't mean that either of them are wrong if both are doing it out of honor to God. The last two verses of the chapter say this, verse 22, the faith that you have keep between yourself and God. Blessed is the one who has no reason to pass judgment on himself for what he approves. But whoever has doubts is condemned. If he eats because eating is not from faith, for whatever does not proceed from faith is sin. I think the simple point here is that we are each responsible only to God for what we do. And if we do things out of faith, then we are doing things in a righteous and holy way. If you believe that it is wrong for you to eat a certain kind of meat on a certain day, and you go and eat that certain kind of meat on a certain day, you're acting out of doubt. You're not, you're not acting out of your belief and you're doing wrong. But if you believe that all foods are permissible at all times and you eat out of your faith that that is the right thing to do, then you are also acting in faith. Neither is wrong, but both are right. And Paul is saying that you shouldn't judge other people for acting out of their faith. Anyway, that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, tag your friends, tell, tell everybody about the channel. I'm gonna be doing more and more videos here and uh, I've got a list and I'm planning on doing it. So I'm excited to continue to build this channel and uh, see where it goes from here. So signing off for now. See you guys later. Peace.